Hello, I'm back. This is Pastor Carolyn with Let's Go Bible. And I've been missing for a little while, had some interruptions. But um, I'm going to give you my email address. is carolynwalker1020 at gmail.com. And my new location where we have services is the Haven of Rest Church. Um, at the Hampton Inn is 2880 Town Boulevard, Middletown, Ohio, 45044. And if you need any information from me, just call 513-324-6436. And our service times are the first and third Sundays of each month at 12 p.m. Let us pray. And we're, we're praying, if you notice, that the prayers I've been praying are, are in the Word. It's, it's Bible prayers from different characters. And today, I chose Psalms 51 when David uh, had, fought, had his fall. But the verses I want to use is even for myself. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew within me a right spirit. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thine holy spirit from me. I think we can all apply that to ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's go Bible. Well, what is happening, uh, I only finished Acts, the fourth chapter, to the 18th verse. And now I want to start at the 19th verse um, with this um, programming, because I, I left off uh, the other verses. So we're going to kind of run through it quickly. Uh, hope you get something out of this. But anyway, it is going back to when Peter and John had healed the lame man, and they ran into a lot of opposition. And now we're going into the 19th verse. After they had told them not to teach or preach anymore in the name of Jesus. And they ran into a lot of opposition. They were held overnight. They were persecuted for teaching and preaching in the name of Jesus. And they were persecuted for the miracle that was done to the man that laid at the beautiful gate. And so we're, we're, going, we're, fast, we're going on to the 19th verse. And it says, Peter and John being told not to speak nor teach anymore in the name of Jesus. But they, their answer was, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, you have to judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. They were eyewitnesses. They were there when the uh, lame man laid at the gate. They couldn't say anything other than what God, what Jesus had done for the man. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people, for all men glorified God for that which was done. The people were there and they witnessed and they were happy about what was done to the lame man and the people who wanted, which is uh, the Jews, the, the judge, the, the hierarchy of that day for as religion is concerned, they, they couldn't find anything that they could persecute them about. For the man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing 
was showed. He was, he was past grown. He was past 40 years old. And you would have thought that the people would have been happy, the church people, let me say, you, you thought they would be happy that the man had been delivered, had been set free, he had been healed. That's not necessarily the way it is. I think I stated before, some people like for you to be in your handicap. They like for you to be down, but when the Lord helps you and heals you and you begin to prosper, people, some people are not very happy. They're very negative. And being let go, they went there into their own company and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. These were not sinners. The chief priests and the elders. And you know what? We have to be careful as clergy or as uh, children of God or as people who say they know God. We have to be careful that we are not the ones that are persecuting people. We have to understand that if it wasn't for being saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, if it wasn't for God, we would be in, in some shapes. So we can never forget that if it wasn't for the blood of Jesus and his death, burial, and resurrection and filling us with the Holy Ghost, we have to remember that we have the potential to do just like anyone else. But when we recognize that if it wasn't for Jesus, we would be the person on the street. We would be the robber, the person who, who uh, does ugly things. We could be that person. And it's only by the grace of God that we're not, and we have to remember that, especially church people. And when they had heard that they lifted up their voice to God and said with one accord, there it is again, they were with one accord on the day of Pentecost. Now trouble has happened, and now they are reporting what the threat was but they were on one accord. Lord, thou art God, which made the heaven and the earth, the sea and all that is in it, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast ordained, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. And I think I've stated before that when people want to crucify you, even though they are not together, they don't believe the same things, but they will gather up to crucify you. For to do whatsoever thine hand and they counsel determined before to be done. They, they took counsel. And, and like I said, if people will gather together against you, if they are not letting the Lord lead them. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that which with all boldness thou may speak thy word. And it is something about this. And we know Peter 
had denied Jesus and there were other things that he did that was not so cool. But now that he has the Holy Ghost, they are speaking with boldness. And I find that's something else that will cause you a lot of trouble. If you talk about what you really know and you are persuaded that it's the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, you need the Holy Ghost to give you the boldness to speak the word. Because in this day we're living in, there are so many things that are not according to the Bible. They're just not. I won't name them because I don't know if I can say a lot of, a lot of things on this program. But there are a lot of things that are going on in the world, in the White House, all across the world, things that are happening that are not according to the word of God. And really, nobody really wants you to speak about it and say that it's wrong. They want you to tolerate and say, well, that's them, that's, that's the way God, you know, it's all right for them as long as, they, as, long as the, it doesn't bother me. But we know that a lot of things are not according to the word of God. By stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy Holy child Jesus. And this is, this is a lot of things today. People do not want you to talk about the name of Jesus. They will argue with you and say that that's not the only way to be saved and that's not the only way to be filled with the Holy Ghost and you don't have to uh, live certain kinds of ways. And when you tell the truth, you must have the Holy Ghost to combat the fiery darts that will come after you to make you shut your mouth and change your mind. And when they had prayed, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. These are the key to when you're uh, to combat adversity. And when they prayed, so I'm saying that all of them were praying, it said, because when they prayed, it didn't say when Peter and John prayed, it said when they prayed, the place, my God, was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. They were filled again. I want to go back to the part that said, when they prayed. And the scripture says, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. I will heal their land. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Prayer. Prayer is a very important part of my life and it should be of your life and every believer's life. The Bible says men ought to always pray and not to faint. There are days when you wake up in the morning you don't really want to pray. You don't really want to take out the time to pray 
especially when everything is going well with you. But we should, whether it's good, bad, or ugly, we ought to pray without ceasing. And some of the things we hear on the news, some things I've heard this morning on the news and yesterday, it troubled me. It troubled my spirit. So what do I do? I pray. I pray. And if you don't help the situation, Lord, please help me. Because prayer will either change the situation or it will change you. So I, this verse is very important. It said, they prayed, my God, till the place was shaken. That means, what I would say it means, the physical place where they were actually shook. What kind of prayer was that? What kind of prayer was that? That the foundation of that place was shaken. I would like to say that I would like to be in, in that kind of a prayer. I would like to pray that kind of a prayer. That something that you can literally see happening when you pray. And then it says, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. So that lets me know because you have an initial feeling like they did on the day of Pentecost and when certain things happen and you pray, the Lord filled them and they spake the word of God with boldness. And I, I believe that sometimes, even in my life, I say, Lord, I, I need to feel your manifestation. I need you to speak in tongues through me again. I can't handle what's going on. But I know if you give me that extra assurance, you feel me again, I speak in tongues again, I can handle it. And I can speak the word with boldness. It's like um, you have a car and you fill it up with gas although you know gas is very high now, but you fill it up with gas, and you say, oh, I'm, I got a full tank. But then after a while, as you go places and do things, your gas gets low. You got to go back to the filling station. And to me, prayer, going to the house of God, hearing the word of God is like a filling station. The gas you use has kind of run low, so you go, you go back to the one who filled you initially. And they say they speak the word with boldness. And the multitude of them that believe were of one heart and of one soul. And that is very important, that when we are uh, seeking the Lord's blessings, and if it's more than one person, two or three or how many, all of us should be. I didn't say we would be, but we should be on the same page. They, the multitude of them that believe were of one heart, and of one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. Lord, 
have mercy. Have mercy. They had all things common. So there was no big eyes. There was no little U's. And if you had a lot, you share it with me if I didn't have very much. And we, everybody had what they needed. They had what they needed. But they had all things common. That would be a wonderful thing if that happened now. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about in the church. My sister, if she doesn't have some shoes and I got 20 pairs of shoes, no problem. She can wear my shoes if I have a coat, if I have whatever I have, a dress or whatever, because to help her, if she doesn't have anything, that makes it, that makes her feel better and it makes me feel better. And then we're doing the will of God. You have to be careful when you have a stingy spirit and say, oh, well, I worked hard to get what I got. They did. They didn't say they didn't say any of this. They they didn't say any of this. They were willing to share so that everyone would have what they needed. In this, in um, in Acts the fourth chapter. Now we know if you know the Bible in Acts the fifth chapter, there's when things started not to be so nice. But in this chapter, they had all things common. And with great power, gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great peace was upon them all. They preached it. They taught it. They witnessed it. And the 34th verse says, Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of land, of houses, sold them and brought them the price of them and put them and sold them. So if you had property and the church needed it, you sold your property so that nobody lacked anything. My, 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 my. And in this day and time, we have trust issues. We have trust issues because there has been an abuse of finances and abuse of different things, especially money in the church. And we say, I am not giving the preacher my money. I will not take what I own and sell it and give it to the preacher. We have trust issues. I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but I am saying that in the first chapters of Acts, and especially this fourth chapter, it said, and they laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. So if you had 10 children, of course, they were going to give you more because you had to feed your children and whatever. If you had two children, you got less. If you had one child or if, if your need was less, you received less.
It said, they laid, Lord have mercy, and they laid them down at the apostles' feet. So, the Holy Ghost was so strong and so prevalent, and the apostles were men of their word. They knew that they loved the Lord and they would do what was right. I want it to be said of me, my personal self, that I will do what's right. And if God can't trust you with money, he probably won't trust you with too many other things. It didn't say money. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. We have to have money to live. We have to have money to function. Money is what we have to have to do outreach. We have to have money to pay bills at the church. We have to have money to feed your family. You must have some money. And for them to lay the money at the apostles' feet. Ooh. And then they distribute. Distribution was made every man according as he had need. So they, the apostles, couldn't have respect to a person. They couldn't have family favoritism. They couldn't have friendship favoritism. They had to do it according to what God wanted them to do. It's something to think about. It's something for us to think about personally. If I had a million dollars, could God trust me to do his business? Could he trust me to pay my tithes and offering? I have uh, my deaconess in the church. She tells this little story sometimes. She said, this man, oh, he was bragging about if I had money, I would do this for the church, and I'll buy the church of Oregon, and, 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 and I'll pay the mortgage and like that. So the Lord blessed him with some money. He got a lot of money. And they, the church and the pastor and everyone was waiting to see, well, when is he going to do all this for the church? And they asked him, why? You said you were going to do this and you were going to do that. And he said, well, you know what? When I didn't have the money, I had the mind. But when I got the money, I didn't have the mind. And that is something, because if we say we're going to do certain things, if the Lord bless us with the finances, we ought to do it. Even if it hurts you to do it, you ought to do it because you said you would. And you said it. Not only to me, but you said it in the ears of God Almighty. He heard you. So, it, 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 I, that just, just that is so many things you can talk about, but they trusted the apostles. And if you want to know if somebody trusts you or not, handle money. If a person is willing to trust you and give you their finances, we ought to do what is right. We send money to different places, to the Jews, to the hungry, and uh, all over, all over. 
And sometimes you think, well, are these people really receiving this money that I'm sending? And then you have to know this, that if they don't, God sees them, hears them, and knows what they're doing. But you did your part. Amen. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And by the apostles, uh, one was surnamed Barnabas, a Levite of the country of Cyprus, having land, he had a lot of land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Wow, wow, wow. I want you to think about that. Just want you to think about it. I, I know there are a lot of crooked people. There are a lot of people that cannot be trusted with money. But in light of this passage, this passage, this is what was happening in the early church. And I thank God for the word. I thank God for the word. I thank God for the opportunity to even speak on this um, Ray Cross Media. I thank God for an open door. And then these things, just these last few verses, will help you to examine yourself. That's why I use David's prayer at the beginning. Create in me a clean heart and, and renew the right spirit within me. Because money, money, mammon, money, 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 money. <laughs> if you don't be careful, you can begin to trust in your money, in your job in your 401k, in, in your IRA or your CDs, you can say, well, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good because I got this and I got this laid up over there, da, 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 da. But honey, we have to be careful of the deceitfulness of riches. Because if you don't watch out, you'll begin to trust in your money and not in God. So if you have money, wonderful. If you're rich, wonderful. If you can help others, that is wonderful. But always remember the source is Jesus Christ. And they were so enthused, I believe, about the Holy Ghost and the miracles that were happening. They were willing. They were willing. All of them that had a lot, they were willing to give it to the work of the Lord. So I think my time is about out, but I did get through the rest of Acts the fourth chapter, and to consider, just read it yourself and consider some of the things that it says and examine yourself and see where you're standing in the scheme of things. But I thank the Lord for your time. I thank the Lord that he let me live another day. We're almost at the end of the year. God has blessed us because we're still here. So I'm thanking the Lord. I'm going to let you go. 
Until next time, I'm going to say the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make his face to shine upon you, the Lord be gracious unto you, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Bye for now.